check out this episode of Cutting Edge Health, Preventing Cognitive Decline. First and foremost, you know, the age is the biggest risk factor for all chronic disease and death, including mm-hmm. any type of neurocognitive related issue. Uh, but as, as we probably all know, we probably know people in their 70s who look like they're in their 50s exactly. and vice versa, right? You know, yeah. we, so, so chronological age is not the best method to, to do a lot of these diagnoses. Um, really, a, a better method is this idea of biological age and, and the age of the body. And this has been something that people have tried to tried to develop for a long, long time. Even in the 1920s, I I always use this example, they were doing biological age by sort of saying your chronological age plus one year for every pack per day you smoked. Um, And so there've been some very, yeah, some very, very crude methods for that for a long time. Um, But but now, um, essentially, what is happening is that these are becoming very, very precise due to this new new sort of idea, new biomarker that, that really is just now happening, sort of this idea of epigenetics, which really uh, is where genetics was over 30 years ago. So let's unpack this. There's a lot of information and it's new science and I think it's, it's unfamiliar to a lot of us. So we should get a test done that measures our epigenetic age. So my audience is really interested in how to stop aging because then you hopefully stop the diseases of aging like cognitive decline, memory issues, Alzheimer's, dementia, all of those things. So why is it important that I know my epigenetic age and how do I find it out? Yeah, so so it's important because uh, you know age is the number one risk factor for all of those things that you mentioned, and mm-hmm. biological age is an even better risk factor, particularly if we look at if you're at advanced or or, or sort of uh, slowing uh, deaccelerated aging process. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, so the idea would be that that these epigenetic markers we're talking about are not like your genetic markers, like APOE three mm-hmm. four etc. These things are changeable, and so through diet, lifestyle, and intervention, we can then look at what is affecting risk of not only uh, you know aging but also disease, uh, to then see how we can mitigate that via lifestyle, diet interventions, pharmaceutical therapies, really anything in our lives which might mitigate that. And so we go through that process by by really measuring um, on the DNA. So we're not measuring the actual sequence. What we're measuring is it's sort of the expression, how those genes are turned on and turned off. And the majority of, of, of that, the way I always like to explain is every cell in your body has the exact same DNA. If we were to take a sample of your skin and your hair, we get the exact same DNA sequence. 